Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. I don't mean I don't mean to cut you up, Bobby, but you got they your hands up like off, I mean, you got your hands up like this. You been working out, bro? You 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 losing some 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 COVID weight? What's up, man? You doing uh-huh. stuff on purpose, bro? I'm not stupid, bro. I'm not. <laughs> 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 you know it, right? Oh, hey, my man, Bobby. <laughs> All right, MK, you probably know Bobby longer than me, but I know when Bobby's doing something on purpose. There's no reason for a man to talk like this when he's in the room and doing all of this stuff. You know what I mean? Well, what you doing, I'm man? Stretching, man. Yeah. This is that that <laughs> Yeah. Uh Young Pira over Dilla, behind the mic like the will of a vehicular killer. So, What's up, all right, everybody? Yeah. You are tuned into the Chop Up. This is the second rendition, talking with MK. She is a part of Dreamville, so we're going to get a little bit more of her insight in regards to the music industry, her experiences, and some of her recommendations on how you can excel and be the best you can be, especially being a minority in uh, today's time. Predominantly, like you know, every executive you see, that's famous is a black male in, in our, you know, if you're talking about black or is a white male, if you're talking about just like, like in general. So give us some like words of wisdom that we can bestow upon them that can let them know that they shouldn't be demoralized and switch careers and become, you know, something else. And like, just kind of like stick to their guns. Like what do, what, what you having not that many examples, what motivated you to ascend to the heist that you have? For me, it was a 90% passion. Honestly, I, I was, I've always loved music. I always loved entertainment industry. And I just had to have the passion. I had to have the drive. Okay. And yeah, there are many times that you get knocked down in your ass and you feel insecure or, you know, you're not good enough or, you know, especially for black women, we have so many challenges up against us. Just keep going. Don't let anybody, be it your friends, be it your family, be it your enemies, be it your circumstance, be it your your history, your past, um, derail you from what you can accomplish. And for everybody listening, define what, you, what define passion for you. What's passion? Just that burning desire, that burning desire, that thing that just makes you rejuvenated and feel purpose. I don't know what best way to describe that, but it's just something that's- Whatever's for you, whatever's for you, I think. I mean, yeah, something you. burning within you that just really pushes you to keep going. Okay. So, question, right? So you're talking about passion and motivates you to keep going, right? But when do you give up the passion? When do you say, you know what, maybe it's time for me to become that doctor that my parents in the village wants me to become to save everybody. You know what I mean? Wait, 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 wait. We're, not from, we're, not from the, we're not from the village, though. Oh, you're not from wow. the village? Wow. Watch yourself. Bobby, Watch yourself. Thank you. Don't speak this in Zambians on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you does not know us, Bobby. I mean, uh, hey, I'm still waiting for my ticket to go to Zambia. I'm still waiting for the invite. But, um, you know, a lot of people have passions in the world, right? It, it motivates them to keep going, you know, no matter how hard it is. I guess the question I want to ask you is, at what point do you try to decide to move from the path that you felt so passionate about? Because there's a lot of people out here trying to get into those positions that they're so passionate about. They would love to be in your shoes. And they've been trying for years, but you know, pandemic hits, people got to pay bills. People got to make sure that other people are taken care of. And at some point, you know, when you're 50 years old, still trying to hand somebody like you a mixtape, you know, maybe at some point you say, Hey, you know what? Maybe I need to see if uh, UPS is hiring, you know what I mean? Or something like that. Like, when do you, when do you be more realistic with your reality? Honestly, you guys, hell if I fucking know, because I never had that issue. No, but that's a great (laughs) great question, and I see it all the time. You know, so many people want to be artists. They want to be rappers and singers, and they go at it for years, and they do have that persistence. They do have that passion. They do have the determination, but there's something missing most times, and it could just be the fucking talent. So Mm -hmm. it's just keeping real people around you there has to be as much as i say don't listen to people around you. listen to your day ones 
listen to the people that you know have your best interests at heart. And sometimes it may just be, you just, you just, that's not, that's not what's for you. That's not your calling. And it's a hard, it's a tough pill to swallow and it's some deep to, you know, internalize. But I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I, I think, I think it's true. I mean, personally, I know I've had different visions of going different places and I'm like, ah, you know what? This is not hitting. I'm struggling to pay my freaking phone bill. I need to go do something else. So, you know, I, I don't know. I, I would agree also not to uh, give up so easily on something mm -hmm. you're passionate about, but I don't know. This just has to be some time of uh, awakening in your mind that you say, listen, you know what? Maybe I can still pursue this, but I'll keep it on the back burner and try to pursue something that's going to be a little bit more fruitful. I don't know, Bobby, what you think? Uh, I mean, I'm always, uh, I believe that your passion can become your poison. Yeah. Mm. I, you know, I don't, don't let, don't get intoxicated by it to the point that it becomes your poison. Like you got to think about your life, livelihood, you know, everything in, in consideration. And hey, you got to know when to pull the cord. Plan so, A, B, and C. Yeah. Yeah, you know, gotta know how to pull it. E, e, F, multiple plans. I mean, Bobby, Bobby at one point was going to be a fitness trainer, you know, and uh, <laughs> he wasn't getting clients. Okay, you guys joke a lot. Is this true? What MK? I, true? I'm a little bit offended that you even asked that. I mean, uh, this, okay. this is gonna, um, I figured a way where if you are like the soul cycle, right? Exactly. But it was so like, but you're eating soul food. So far, you, why you're cycling? But you know, it just wasn't working out for a lot of people. It's it just like a lot of people. A lot of people were really. A lot of people were really about the vision. Yeah. Because like I was like, yo, you can eat candy yams while you're on the bike. Candy yam cycle. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I didn't really think about the <laughs> the smell, the sweat plus the food. I don't know. I didn't think about the whole it environment. It was a lot. So with, it, with it, that, it got, with that's, candy yams, yeah. with the candy yam cycling, right? So let's go back to having your passion and your dreams, right? So MK, um, you said sometimes artists can be pursuing their music career and maybe they're just missing the talent. So have your day ones around you, right? Maybe some of these people have the right interests, but they don't have it in the right direction. So maybe who, somebody who's an artist um, should probably be a ghostwriter or something like that, or you know, mm. probably do something that's a little bit in the same area. Sure. So in terms of you know managing artists or not even not even music but just having a goal for yourself right and you have your day ones around and you want to have a realization of what's probably your true calling um you know what are the what, what are some of the things somebody can do if if they're not reaching the goal that they want but they can kind of stay in that same arena and you know make sure that they're still you know surrounded by the things that they that, that they're so passionate about I think it's important to be open to exploring. So for me, my main thing was always, I wanna be an a &R. So I wanna be in the studio. I wanna discover the talent. And when I got into, like I said, I did an internship in the gospel department. I dabbled in publicity. I dabbled in promotion. Um, I dabbled in some ANR, as in supporting ANRs, and I just realized there was so much of there were so many other things I could be doing, and just opened my eyes to so many different facets of the industry that I kind of honed in and pinpointed what I wanted to do. And even coming to Dreamville, I always thought that I would be back in management, and because I love artist management so much, and here I am doing operations. So just always be open to and adaptable to change and don't don't be so fixated on one thing that you lose sight of opportunities around you. You know the crazy thing about talking to somebody like so like y'all and I are lifelong I mean like I think everybody is, but like I think we we love music more than the average person, right? So like we can have this conversation for three days and not have run out of questions. Um, but we always have a, a very, 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 very like passionate argument about playlists. So, right now, what is your like? What is your, like? Give us an, a glimpse, uh, some insight into what are you listening to? Like, what artists are you like are on rotation for COVID? You know what I mean? The last three months, like, who are you really like? All right, these are my go tos to get me through the uh, you know the pandemic. What's now, your pandemic playlist? Give me a couple of joints. 
Naturally, I'm an old soul. So okay. I revert back to like older music. So yeah. old R&B and, you know. Give us some. So, mm. so I've literally been listening to like Fela lately. Um, I've been listening to Stevie Wonder. Mm. Um, I've been listening to, as an African, Huma Sekela and Oliver Mutukuzi. So just like my black superhero music. Oh, you know about that, you know about that, yeah? He doesn't know about it. Uh, just uh, how that go? <laughs> what shall we do? Uh, you don't know about that shit. 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 You don't know about that Okay. All right. So that's so those are your vibes for like enjoying yeah, my coat. But on the on the regular, it's still like Sade. And okay. Steve Wonder, just some feel good music. Feel good vibes. Yeah. Now you know in history, in our history, like I think, you know, for we're in a very like rare place mm-hmm. in terms of the generation before us has not been in a situation that we're living in right now, right? Like we're coming off a pandemic where just you know hundreds of thousands of Americans have died, right? And then you look at the global. Um, impact of COVID. Then you couple that with this whole, now we're back to like a 1960s civil rights kind of movement, right? And if you look at everything that has um, predominantly been prevalent in those eras was music, right? Like the civil rights music, civil rights movement, the 1980s, uh, even when there was the AIDS epidemic, the We Are the Worlds, the Marvin Gaye's, what's going on? There's always music has always been the soundtrack for revolution. Mm-hmm. What would be that soundtrack to this period? Like, what are the records on my soundtrack for this period? Yeah. Honey, Kendrick Lamar, we gonna be all right. Okay. That's war music. Like, I need to listen to. That to motivate me and get me out of bed and keep pushing and smiling in corporate America's face. Mm -hmm. Um, J. Cole, be free. Okay. You're not familiar? Google that. Um, I Uh, think like that. I know Jermaine. (laughs) (laughs) Like that. Jermaine. Um, All right. Yeah. What are are your favorites? What's your, what gets you going? Me? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll go first. I mean, I already know what Bobby listened listen to <laughs> to get himself going. What is that? It's kind of embarrassing. Please do tell. Right foot up, left foot slide, left foot like, up. Bobby, right we're going through slide. some serious see, times. You can't be listening to Bobby slide, slide. Hey, every day. You need to be sliding <laughs> out. Wait, out the he mentions oh, gloves. No, he mentions the gloves. Get it. He oh, mentioned some gloves. I, I think he mentions gloves in the beginning. Uh, I, I think he said Nike gloves with the. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'll, I'll answer first. I mean, um, some of the music I listen to, I, like I had such a great time. I went to Afrochella in Ghana in um, this past uh, week. Oh, you gotta, you gotta come. You gotta bring uh, the You gotta, you gotta come out there. It was so much love. It was so good seeing so many people from so many different backgrounds just coming together to, um, you know, celebrate. It was like a celebration of being black, you know, and, and, and mm-hmm. being connected to your roots. So I'm still, I'm, I'm heavy in Afro Beach right now. You know what I mean? I barely listen to the radio. Sometimes I, I get a chance, so I do, but Afro Beach is where I'm at right now. And um, So put us know, on, like, what do you listen to? Give us I know, I need artist. some motivation. Uh, I mean, I'm very also, fast. I'm also, I'm also a old, a old soul. So before Afro Beach, it was hip life. So you got your your daddy Yankee. I'm mean, daddy Yankee. You got your daddy. daddy. Okay. Bobby, you still not judge. Whoa. <laughs> okay, Asante. Oh my God. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not so Right. <laughs> what else? Bad Bunny? What else? Yeah, bad, yeah. No, you, yeah, back in the days, you used to be Bad Bunny. Listen to, wait, wait, wait. Talk about, are you listening to Daddy Yankee? Did you motivated for, for this life? Oh my goodness, we are doomed. That's <laughs> Olina? They got.
<laughs> We're going to talk a little business, right? Because I feel like Jay-Z kind of said in a couple of songs, I can't really quote him verbatim, but, you know, he said, truthfully, I want to rap like Common Sense. But then, you know, he was talking about how he would love to say things that are more socially impactful, but at the end of the day, that wouldn't make money, right? Mm-hmm. So is it uh, profitable to have a more socially conscious record label such as Dreamville? From what you from what from what I gather, I don't want to label you as uh, you know, the 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 you know the 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 herbal tea of the of the of the music industry. Uh, you know, the 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 the, the Dr. C B of the of the music industry, but you know, you from what you're saying, you from what I gather, you you're trying to keep it real and you're not trying to sell out. But is there is there profit in that? Just for Absolutely. anyone. Absolutely. And considering the age and time we live in where an artist can get on their IG live and have a little donate tab and make a hundred grand a night, you know, just really? off of yes. Hundred grand a night? Yes. If a hundred people get on your a hundred thousand people get on your IG live and everyone donates a dollar, you can make that right now wow. in these times. And yeah. people are people are doing you're saying that from like people are doing that. People, people are making those are hitting those numbers. I was at a, a Erica Badu show in the beginning of COVID and it was like a dollar there were eight thousand people in there. She made eight thousand dollars. So there's ways of making money and being super entrepreneurial um, today. And most of our artists, thank God, are all touring artists. And where's the money at on the road? So how do you, so how do you, so right now, as someone that manages operations and the budgets and, and the finances for your record label and your artists, how have you adapted to COVID? Because it's been like three months, they haven't toured. Um, and I, you know, we always, we want these artists to maintain their livelihood because their livelihood is part of their creativity. If I'm stressed and I can't pay my bills, I'm not thinking about going to the studio. Right. Have you made any adjustments to make sure that your artists are okay or, you know? Well, it, initially, obviously for everyone, it was like, it was hard and a bump in the road, but thankfully everyone's in a decent space. Our artists for the last two, three years consecutively. So they're in decent spaces. Are we thinking of ways and how we can monetize? Absolutely. Does it mean um, teaming up with brands and, you know, thinking about some cool content? Yes. Um, but this is what the music industry is based on, adaptability. It's ever-changing and it's constant. So you just have to roll with the times and figure out what's next. Dope. So- Oh, can, oh. We, can we go back into something you said, right? You said something about an artist can be on Instagram live and have 100,000 people where they can make money off of that, right? Mm-hmm. In terms of contracts, I don't know if you can answer this or you can't. Um, in terms of, you know, contracts that artists sign, right? Now, they are a representation of the company that mm-hmm. they are signed to, right? So is there any contractual agreement? Like if a person has let's say YouTube page, is the company in charge of that YouTube page and any uh, proceeds that may come out of their promotions from videos and whatever content they put on YouTube and Instagram? Like, I know you say somebody could put a a donation box or whatever the case is, but at the end of the day, you are the machine that's funding their, their image. Right? So let's say I'm on Instagram. That's spicy talk. That's just a spicy talk. My man, man Butters outside selling waters right now. He had had a chain and a fancy car. He Uh, had a hundred thousand followers. So the chain is fake and the car is fake. Exactly. You know what I mean? So our companies, if you can elaborate, our companies taking any of the proceeds that these artists are making again this is these are unprecedented times so oh. could those be conversations absolutely this is okay so when i was an intern when i was in my orientation the then president of sony spoke to us um and he was like jessica simpson was a multi-billion dollar business mm-hmm. and we made nothing on her she didn't sell records she wasn't popping. 
we made nothing on her. So he instated 360s because what did Jessica Simpson go ahead and do? She had a whole shoe line, she had a whole MTV um, series, she got into fashion, she got into so many other things. And at the time before 360s, labels were not able to monetize in that way. So could those be conversations? Absolutely. But then you have platforms like YouTube where, you know, licenses get involved and royalties come back. So it's, it's, a, it's a 360. I mean, because they, you know, you hit 360 and it's literally like three sixes. Like Your merchandising. Six, six, six deal. Like 360 like, deal. Yeah, not 360. It's a 360. It's going to get you. But I mean, from a business standpoint, it makes sense. You built a brand. I mean, but how many it's, artists are coming built with the whole okay, team, but it, it's the more, whole image, with the whole following? With you know, we're essentially the machine. So, so it, it's more in favor of the machine than the artist, just in, in all. Not necessarily because the artist is going to get the backing of the of the machine. the machine. We get to give you your advance, you know. So it depends on the artist. Then. What do you mean? So it's not it's not for everybody. So like for instance, if you're a self motivated artist, you've you've created a grassroots following. Like let's say for like instance, like a chance the rapper, like a chance or like a Wiz Khalifa. You know, Wiz Khalifa had the whole he had his own little following, and you know, oh, okay. and it, it managed to get to a festival or whatever. And yeah, then at the end of the day, he got signed, but he already had his core base. So that's not a three sixty deal candidate. Because you already it have your could have been a 360 because labels have been doing 360s since about 2010 or 11. Mm. Like it's standard across the board. Oh, there's not no there's no caveats and like there's oh, it's just standard like, across the board. Most artists are getting 360 deals since 2010. Yes, I have to fact check that, but I recall around that time. So artists just deny it. Just for, I don't know. A lot of artists, they, they, a lot of artists say they don't have three sixties. Okay, great. <laughs> I mean, I we may have to edit that part. We might have to edit that. <laughs> your, your DMs may be a lot of hateful, uh, hateful. Now. Yeah, we may I have, have, to, have, have to edit that. Still, you lie. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, in, in regards to you know you being a, a double minority, as Bobby stated, right? Black woman in the music industry, right? What, what are some of the things uh, a person who is inspiring to be in the same position as you can do? I know you said you did the interning, um, but you know, right now in this whole COVID-19 pandemic, you know, a lot of things are on shutdown. So what can somebody do in the midst of this shutdown to try to make sure that they're possibly setting them setting themselves up for success and possibly getting into a position where they can, you know, get that experience to, you know, learn from the top execs and try to be in a position such as yourself. Basics. Make sure your resume is tight. Um, man, it's hard, but you know what's good? There's so much access to everyone just with social media. Send DMs. Like you don't know who who's actively in their DMs. Send DMs. You don't know who's gonna respond. Um, when things open back up, network. Go to events. Go to seminars. Right now, the best thing you could do is be online educating yourself. If you're interested in music business, you better find an online course, or you better be reading about La Reed and Clive Davis and uh, Andre Harrell and Diddy and all these amazing people, Quincy Jones that have come before us. What did they do? The Kevin Lyles, what was their blueprint? That's what I did. If it wasn't for Russell Simmons and Kevin Lyles and Diddy and Kanye West's graduation, I probably wouldn't have been as inspired as I was. Do your research, there's books, there's interviews. Just know as much, be a sponge and soak up as much knowledge as you can so that when you do get an opportunity, you're prepared whatever that may mean. Yeah. All right, so with the, you know, piggyback off of that question, right? So with things randomly, not randomly, but constantly changing with the way things are turning out in this country, you have the pandemic, you have the misfortunate situation in Minneapolis, you know, a lot of places are, 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 are changing their way of 
doing operation, right? A lot of companies right now are making sure that they are, you know, on the position of black awareness and, and making sure that they are actually advocates of social justice, right? So in regards to music, right, I, I think I saw an article where some, I don't know if it was the, the Grammys, I'm really not a music person to know categories, Grammy, Oscar, I, I couldn't tell you the difference, but I saw something where it was like they were moving the urban category or something like that. So, you know, something like this, well, something that occurred in Minneapolis and it was pub, uh, publicized nationwide, internationally, has changed a lot of the ways people want to do business, right? So what do you think is the future of business? Let's say 20 years down the line, I mean, social media has become a, a juggernaut and how you promote yourself. I mean, do you see any future changes that, you know, may occur in the next, let's say, five to 10 years? Who? what's big now and what we've been actively fighting for is, and I use urban in the, co in the quotations because mm -hmm. that's something, like you read, a lot of like labels and even award categories are trying to do away with. But in urban music, we are now pop music. Urban music is popular music. We're at the top of all the te top 100 charts, the top of all the billboard charts and, you know, hot 100, we're all there. So what's horrible and what's more than more so now coming to light is that they are no black people at the decision, at the deciding table. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how are we the leaders of the culture, the leaders of what's cool, but we don't get to dictate or have a seat at that table? Mm -hmm. We've Read talked about, about some. This is okay. talked about artists. We've talked about mismanaging money. We've talked about things you should do to kind of put yourself in a better position despite the unfortunate quarantine time that we are all facing. We talked about artists, um, music appreciation, so many different topics from the from the expertise of MK, Miss Dreamville herself. So, what, see, see, what is one you. of the things that, you know, either rubs you the wrong way? It has to be one thing. What grinds your gears. What grinds your gears. I mean, it could be whatever you want. This is your 30 seconds. Sound off. Okay. And I will. I want to start on a positive note. I miss all my friends. I'm so grateful to be healthy and thank you guys for this opportunity. What grinds my nerve is what's going on in Africa right now. Bobby, we have to go back home and figure this out, okay? We cannot let foreigners tell us we're foreigners in our own land. So I would love the way we have the Back to Africa last December. We all went back home. Let's invest in our continent. So, MK, you dropped a lot of gems. I, I think people will be inspired to follow suit and the, the avenue that you took to where you're at currently. So, if anybody's interested in following Greenville or following you on social media, you can provide us with the uh, usernames that you guys use. If anybody wants to hear whatever you guys have moving forward um, in the next couple of weeks or months or you know, days to come. Dreamville on IG, um, dreamville.com, and I am MK underscore O H Y E A H on IG. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, so that's how you have it. This is the chop up with the lovely MK. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you guys do not hear from our podcast in the next couple of days, we'll probably be in tour with J. Cole. And, you know, we, 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 try to be, we try to be calm about it. But you know what I mean? When she heard this song, it's all good. We got the new track from Patron Brothers, y'all. Ladies, you got five seconds to get to the dance floor. <laughs> Fellas, put your condoms on because we going. Oh my god, you guys are so embarrassing. <laughs>